Just before we get started, I'd just like to remind you that I do have an email subscription list. Uh, the link for the list is in the description to this video. It's also on my websites, russleach.com and comicbookblackbelt.com, and also over at onlydeathcansavers.com. That's the title of my new book. It's a Bronze Age inspired cosmic fantasy romp. So if you like the way comics used to be, full of fun and action, check it out and sign up for the email subscription list. Thanks very much for listening and now on with the video. Hi there, welcome back to the dojo. I am Russ Leach, I'm the comic book Black Belt. And this is one of a series of videos where I'm going to talk about this book, How to Draw Comics the Marvel Way. Um, there are lots of books out there that uh, profess to be able to teach you how to draw comics and a lot of them are really good um, but this is the daddy this is the book if you've got one book to teach you how to draw comics or to, to help you how to draw comics this is the one you should have um, it's it's not perfect but but it is very very close it also has uh, one of the finest artists ever to grace comics John Buscema drawing within its pages uh, and Stanley writing the book. Now, um, I was very fortunate to be involved in Draw the Marvel Way, which is uh, similar in, in its approach. Um, I put in there my hints, tips, tutorials of, of how to draw the Marvel characters. I've, I've been blessed with being able to draw a ton of Marvel characters for Marvel within these pages. And it was a hundred issues over just over four years. There were some other extremely talented people involved in the book. And it really is a good book in my personal opinion. But it still has not got a patch on this one. So what this series of videos is, is me effectively going through all the sections, all the lessons, all the, the chapters of this book, giving you some examples of my artwork that I feel ha that I've uh, improved or I've uh, benefited from this book and how that works for me. Um, and in the chapters where you draw along, I'll be doing some drawings and hopefully you can draw along with me. And hopefully it'll be of some use to everyone out there and if nothing else it'll be an advert for you to go out and buy this book i'm using a pdf that i got from uh, an educational download i will put the link to that pdf in the description for each video in the series but i i can't instill enough in you go and buy this book and put it on your desk because it's an absolute must have so without further ado i'll get on with this episode So on to chapter two, uh, if I bring it up on screen, um, this is the secrets of form, making an object look real. Um, anyone, even you or I can draw some sort of circle or square, but how do we make it look like the real thing? It's, this is uh, obviously an early chapter and it's really getting people to grips with uh, three dimensional objects, um, putting things in the world that you're drawing. Uh, so that's why um, I'm a big fan of this book. It's not just about drawing the Marvel way. It it uh, it, it takes you through the, the, the early stages of, of getting yourself into a mindset where you draw things uh, three-dimensionally rather than flat. So um, we move on to the next page. Uh, it starts off this is this is great so I'll read some of this one of the main things that can ruin a drawing is the appearance of flatness which is what I was talking about three-dimensionality to many beginning artists and even some old-timers tend to concentrate on height and width while neglecting the virtue the vitally important dimension of depth which is just another name for thickness to say it in another way, whatever you draw should have some kind of thickness to it. It should have bulk and body and weight. Uh, it should seem solid. If it looks flat, it won't make it. Um, so again, you know, buy the book, read the whole thing, read through. Um, but these are self-explanatory um, and they're pretty simple to, to knock up. Uh, these are the things that you should practice on all the time ordinary things so i'm gonna i'm gonna quickly do one so there's a chair there so uh, let's draw a chair so let's just draw a chair so we've got the back of it again so you're putting in the rudimentary shapes bearing in mind what a shit what a chair looks like obviously so uh a chair is literally just a cube with a flat back back on it and from there you can add in you know 
the detail of there's a there's the back of it maybe even put like a little comfy seat on there so it's got a little bit of padding on it in goes the wood again I'm doing this freehand so don't expect the lines to be super straight again three dimensionality there you see this the legs coming down they've got sides to them they've got depth to them okay so there, there we are that's just a chair I'm just kind of quite pleased with that it's a chair what else they got there I'm, I always really really like the um the umbrella that he drew here from the circle which is really quite cool um looks like he's used uh a circle template there which is perfectly acceptable I used to use them all the time um, because I draw mostly um, digitally now I tend to use tools um, to do that for me along with bits and pieces of perspective which we'll get into because they do have a um, the, the book does have a, a chapter on perspective later on and it's very very important so um, no point in going over that here we'll just stick to the basic shapes the other thing that i really loved was the tv as well so let's let's move on to the next page see see if they they we ramps it up a little bit right so we've got a gun and a, and a car here uh here we see a simple handgun without which there could hardly be any comic books <laughs> or tv action shows or movies and if you ever wanted to draw a western strip you'd better take particular note of the fact that the barrel is really a simple cylinder so what they're doing here is they're showing that ordinary basic shapes make up far more complicated shapes um it's just a basis of drawing really and that's like like i was saying why i love this book so much is it's not just teaching you uh, a particular style or the, the way that the you know the over dramatic uh, approach to drawing marvel uh, characters but also how to draw um so i've got some samples here actually from draw the marvel way there's a a gun that i did or so, several guns and you can see that that again we'll move on to perspective uh, in another chapter so you've got the perspective there but this pretty simple handgun here um a Nick Fury-esque style slick handgun uh, you can see it starts off with a very basic shape I've just popped a basic shape in thought about its three dimensionality uh, how it's how it has depth um, and then detailed it up so I've gone through a series of sketches um, starting off with some very very simple shapes uh, and that, that pretty much works part of the course um, where are we? okay so he's, so he's got the gun um I, I, I as a as a kid when i first got this book when i was very young the first copy i ever got um i obsessed over this airplane <laughs> i absolutely loved it i don't know what it was about it i always wanted to draw the airplane so i'm going to have a quick go at the airplane and, and show uh show my lack of skills so basically you can you it doesn't matter if it's an airplane or a rocket ship or whatever it's a cylinder isn't it it's a cylinder and then what you want to do is you want to smooth the cylinder off okay and give it some windows got some windows there okay I, I don't have any reference in front of me so forgive me if this isn't quite right um, and then you bring it off at the end there and put the tail on there uh, I suppose the, I, this literally is just for memory so I'm just going to put the wings in there so they're not straight they're curved aren't they wings over to that way and then maybe put a jet underneath and again see this three-dimensional shape there's a cylinder putting the cylinder in underneath odd shape for the wing because it's just sort of a sort of a, a very long uh, curved triangle and get the, the nose cone just right on there sort of a, a bit jumbo-y so I'm, I'm now I'm now I've I've got that cylinder shape and I'm now deforming it to give it more of a of a look In there there and there's, there's there's my plane there's my plane okay what's it like oh, it's not bad it's a bit bit slick a bit more modern maybe but there's there's I didn't put any wheels on mine either and he's got longer longer um fins at the back but you see how it, it works out just you know a, a simple um a simple cylinder or a bunch of cylinders and again like i was saying perspective will do later it's automatic that we've put in perspective there both he and i um and it's it's pretty straightforward i've got my other cylinder over there to finish that off finish that off and if i put some i put my own 
I'm just mucking about with this. Put my own wheels in there. Okay, so that's probably about over there. So there you go. So it's it's pretty straightforward stuff, um, but it's that's what's magical about this book. That's why I'm going through this book. Uh, and then uh, you get onto something a little bit more um, a little bit more character centric. So as promised, let's see how we've learned uh, what we've learned relates to the human figure in this uh, quick sketch of Daredevil. Notice he has cubes for a rib cage and hip area, while cylinders form the basic construction of his arms and legs. Um, I think the jury's out on this one. Uh, some people use, and, and I did for the techniques in Draw the Marvel Way, um, a stick figure. So uh, um, uh, basically a, a sort of a, a, a stick skeleton of roughly where the shoulders, hips, arms, legs, uh, backbone, head go. And then over that with, um, I won't say ovals because I, I, I know that a lot of people have problems with ovals. Um, it's not for me it's not so much ovals as it is knowing where the muscles are so i kind of oval in the muscles in a in a very rough way in the way that you would be using cylinders here but i have used this technique before and it is a great technique um so uh, if we do if i do something really quick here say i do uh so i'm just going to rough in roughly where I'm going to put the legs and the feet. So we'll do something like that. Okay. Maybe uh, Thor. Yeah, but reaching up with his hammer. So, um, so just this is this is quick as well because I don't I don't want to keep you, you know, bored. <laughs> you got you got to get on with your own drawings. Um, and this is not being sped up. This is real time. Uh, so I've got my rib cage in there. And then uh, down to the elbow there. Do, do, do. There's the. Again, shapes. So that's, that's that oval on top there where he have his neck. Let's get his fist there. Again, shapes. Basic shapes. Basic shapes. And then um, into hips so again re really really loose and quick but you can see how that builds up really really easily really quickly let's put a cloak on him dun, dun, dun. put that there Okay, so you can see how that builds up very, very quickly into a recognisable structure. I mean, that's uh, the, the, it's it's a bit of a lame pose, but it's a recognisable person. You can see that straight away just by putting those cylinders in those three dimensional shapes. And not only that, it's created a three dimensional person as well. So straight away, you're dealing with depth, which is exactly what this chapter is all about. So let's go on to uh, next. Now let's get a little heavier. Even spheres this is uh, Namor or Namor, however you call him. Even spheres. When I was a kid, even John John Buscema, I used to call him John Buscema. I've heard other people call him that, but uh, Namor, Namor. Uh, there were other names as well. Um, it's funny how when you're on your own, as so many of us would have been as kids reading comics deep in our world, um, we would have got some names wrong. And it's just funny to see how people. Um, pronounce different things uh especially as you get older <laughs> but uh so namor namor is uh telling us that cube cylinders can use some embellishment and this is the way we add shading black tones to reinforce is iron man notice how the with the use of shading immediately gives the object a sense of sol uh, solidity solidity they seem to have depth and roundness and mass so you, you can see it for yourself on the page here so um if I quickly go back to my drawing, so literally just just the chair, okay? We've just got the chair here, rather than, rather than drawing out, Paul. So if I put shadow and apply shadow to those faces on the chair, it illustrates 
it illustrates that point perfectly. It, it enha enhances the solidity of it. It puts it more in a real world um, environment. Your eyes, your mind are already fooling yourself into believing that it's something more solid than it actually is, just lines on a screen. Um, so that in itself, and, and it, it doesn't matter what you, do, it, what you do it on, you do it on anything. You pick up your shade and, and put it on any of the objects that you, that you put together. And it instantly creates depth just by adding that lighting to it. So um, again, the basics, it's, it's, it's not just showing you how to draw the marble way. That's, what's, that's why this book is so fantastic. And then on to the last couple of pages, where he's, they're basically just showing you the, you know, panels that have been done and, and what went into making those panels up. I would imagine some of this is re retroactive. They've done it afterwards, but you can see, especially that uh, Mole Man picture there and the shapes that, that are going on. I've got a couple of samples of my own here. So I think this is uh, quite a good example. It's very straightforward, obviously, as I've said several times, perspective, we'll, we'll deal with perspective in the, the perspective chapter. Um, these, this, this quite convincing, especially once the color went on, fantastic color from James Freddie on this. Um, you can see that, you know, barely you can see it's it's like a whole scape you can see the picture is is, is an ensemble it's one thing but you instantly uh, instinctively know that there are shapes in there there are three-dimensional shapes and of course that's exactly what it is it's just boxes um boxes with other boxes put on top <laughs> obviously working within the uh, perspective uh, that's that, that I've laid down but that's all it is it's just boxes and then you add the shade and the color and what have you and and this is quite a good example and is actually closer to the example that the the uh, Stan and uh, John have in the book in that this panel here you can see the way I've I've put it together um, and this was, although obviously uh, for presentation purposes, this is redone. I've, I've gone over this uh, in, in black ink. When I actually did this, this panel or this, uh, the, this example, um, this is exactly what I did. I, I laid down the perspective and I laid down the boxes for the cars, where they would be, you know, how realistic that might be. Uh, and the buildings as well, the, 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 the panels and the sides of the buildings. So it does work. It really does work. And, it, and it's uh, absolutely integral into making your work look and feel three dimensional, no matter what the style. So um, that's it for chapter two. Uh, come back for the next video in chapter. That will be chapter three, of course, because it comes after two. And uh, we'll be talking about the power of perspective in that chapter. So um I'm really looking forward to that actually because it's a really tricky subject uh it, it's pretty straightforward but it, but it, but it does cause people some problems so hopefully you've really really enjoyed uh my run through of the second chapter i'll be back with another chapter chapter three soon um like i said at the start of the video if you were around if not i'll say it again uh you can find me at russleach.com at comicbookblackbelt.com you can find out more about my new book only death can save us at only death can save us.com please like share um the videos it really helps with the algorithm um and uh you can also sign up for my email list at any of those places uh, that's a that's a, a really key thing for me if you can do that so i can keep you uh, up to date with videos on the channel but more importantly about my book and i won't be stuffing your inbox full of rubbish you can also find me on instagram and over at twitter and facebook and please do leave messages talk to me uh absolutely love uh talking about comic books and comic book art and um one more thing that <laughs> I'm starting to lose my track. <laughs> uh, oh, that's it. That's what I was going to say. If you've subscribed, please subscribe. Um, if you haven't subscribed, uh, thank you 
uh, those that have subscribed thank you so much if you haven't subscribed please do uh, and please give a thumbs up for the video those people that have subscribed I'll bore you again I'm gonna do it every time thank you so much it's humbling to have you subscribe and it's great to have you to know that I'm I'm in some way entertaining or helping or even if you just want to interact come back to me and like I say talk to me about comics and comic book art that's all for me for now I'll be back with another chapter soon and another video soon thanks very much for joining me in the dojo today and I'll be back again real soon. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching Comic Book Black Belt. If you've enjoyed the content from this video, please like, share or subscribe and come over and follow me on Twitter. It's been great having you in the dojo. See you again soon.